The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, we are starting. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this STAR webinar on how to use oven efficiently. Divya Raithata will be conducting the webinar and right at the start, she will explain when and how audience questions can be raised. Divya is director of Vinod Rai Engineering, which is a long time molds and machinery manufacturing supplier member of STAR. She is also a proactive director on the current STAR board. Above all, Divya is a young achiever. She has organized several workshops for shop floor personnel of our industry. Her experience and knowledge on technical issues belies her young age. She is a BTEC in production engineering with honors in industrial engineering from VIT Pune. Divya will have much to share with all of you in the course of the webinar. So it is now over to Divya. Thank you, Zaman, for the introduction. Good evening, everyone. Let's quickly go through how to use GoToWebinar software for the first timers here. Maybe some of you already know it, but let's just go through it quickly. Uh, you can use the orange arrow here to hide and open the control panel. By default, you are in mute, but if you would like to unmute yourself or mute your mic again, you can use this icon. Uh, if you have any query, you can reach you can use this raise hand icon. This can be used to ask the presenter to allow you to ask a question. Or you could write down your question here so that uh, not to interrupt the presenter during the flow. And this is what I would prefer you all to do. So I think we will start with the presentation now. So a uh, topic for today is how to use your oven efficiently. I'd like to thank STAR for allowing me this opportunity to present a webinar. And I'd also like to thank all the attendees for taking out your precious time of for being here. Hello all. Now you know the face behind the voice that you'll be hearing for next 30 to 35 minutes. I'm Divya from Vinodra Engineers Private Limited and this is how you can contact me. The agenda for today will be, I would like everyone to go away with an idea of making a small change on their routine shop floor activities, which would increase the efficiency and the life of their food, the ovens. So uh, in today's presentation, I plan to discuss 10 good shop floor practices, which when converted into habit will result in an efficient and reliable oven. And also basics about why we need to follow these practices and how it will give us an advantage. With good basics, you will have endless options. So let us get started with it. The first thing is maintenance of the burner. We will be discussing both the diesel and the gas burners. So for maintenance of diesel burners, automizing nozzle regulates the amount of diesel that will be sprayed for combustion. This is, uh, thus it function, thus its good functioning plays a crucial role in diesel consumption of your burner. We need to optimize the amount of air sucked in by the burner to have enough oxygen for complete combustion of fuel for getting the exact air to uh, fuel to air ratio you need to refer your manual to know the setting of air combustion as to what size of nozzle that you are using choking of diesel line filter doesn't allow the pump to generate enough pressure for automization by nozzle 
thus cleaning the line diesel line filter regularly is a very important part clean the photocell photocell is an important safety feature which need to be kept dust free accumulation of dust on photocell can result into flame fail unnecessarily check pressure settings regularly because the pressure settings in the pump is going to give pressure of the fuel to the atomizing nozzle and if the pressure is not proper your atomization and spraying of diesel will not be proper resulting to inefficient fuel consumption clean the dust filter of the cover clogged air filter results in suction of lesser amount of air of the same at the for the same air setting thus affects the combustion rate of your fuel next is get a burner serviced by an expert or train your person to become an expert because maintenance of your burner is like having an apple a day to keep the doctor away now let's move on to gas burners so best practices for checking the system leakage in the gas is using soap water spray and spraying it at the uh, potentially leaking places and at all the joints and if there's bubble formation like that in the uh, gif you know that there's a leakage and if there's no bubble then you are good to go pressure readings of the regulator need to be checked regularly because when you monitor them regularly it can give you an early indication for system leakage or it can give you an indication for there's time to change the cylinders spark igniter need to be placed at the right location and you can refer your burner manual to know what is the right location for your spark igniter air flow similar to diesel burner need also be to be checked in the gas burner for complete combustion of the fuel visible inspection inspection of flame is a good way of checking if your burner is in good condition or not a good gas flame is a blue flame with hints of yellow at the tip the shroud of the frame uh, the the shroud in the burner which is this part uh, provided in your furnace combustion box it is a very important part because it helps stabilize the flame and we should not be removing this part non stabilized flame means unburned fuel gases now we would go to maintenance of the blower which is second most important part so uh, it would include this is a one of the blower assembly so for smooth functioning and vibration free blower assembly uh, you should be lubricating the sleeves so that the shaft runs smoothly and there's no blockage second the blower motor must be kept dirt free and also secured properly so that the vibrations are not uh, generated also the tightness of the belt need to be proper for the motion of the motor to be smoothly and efficiently transferred to the motion of the shaft one of the most important things is location factor of the oven your burner constantly sucks in fresh air for fuel consumption restricted air flow around blower motor of burner might lead to incomplete combustion thus waste of fuel we need to make we also need to make sure that the burnt gas has a place to go out of the shop floor so that the oxygen ratio of the air on the shop floor doesn't lower down which would again lead into lower oxygen air being sucked by the burner which would not lead to complete combustion and thus fuel inefficiency and for safety reasons gas supply bank and diesel tank must always be located outside the premises from where the oven is placed so hence a good oven location which we might not usually think is a big factor but yes it does affect the efficiency of your oven next factor and very important factor is air flow because all of the rotational molding furnaces are hot air circulating furnaces so a good air circulation will result into a good burner so how you can use your flow rate intelligently 
all manufacturers have their own design considerations of CFM and RPM depending on furnace design. So make sure you consult your manufacturer and know what is the right RPM on which your blower should be uh, running on the design and make sure that your blower are consistently at the right RPM and there's no clog in the impellers or something like that. So this would give you into a good uh, efficiency of your burner. If your air is moving too fast, if your RPM is more than the rated RPM, it would also lead, it would also not aid in heat transfer from the air to the mold. Usually the air must strike the moles around 10 meter per second to transfer the heat efficiently. Next part would be using the correct size of burner. Usually your uh, machine manufacturers will give you with the designed and correct wattage and size of your burner. But in case you want to change your burner, maybe you want to change it from diesel to gas or gas to diesel, or maybe uh, in today's uh, Indian market scenario, people changing from uh, diesel or gas burner to biofuel burners. When you select a different burner for your existing uh, machine, you need to keep in mind that the wattage that you select is correct. If you are not using a certified from the manufacturer of your machine, do consult your manufacturer. And before selecting your uh, burner, you need to know the volume of the oven, the temperature of the oven for which the oven is designed. Because if you overheat your oven, either to make a lower cycle time or for any other reason, and if your oven is not designed to uh, tolerate the over temperatures it might affect the life of your oven so it is always a good idea to take a technical support from the manufacturer when doing such changes in your oven check your thermocouples this is a very simple but a very important part because uh, one thing is your temperature controller must be placed in a location which gives representative temperature of the complete oven. If it is placed too near the burner or if it's placed too away from the burner, it might not give you the appropriate results for the regulating of the temperature of the oven. Impaired wire may cause deflection in the reading, which is not desirable. So check for impaired wires in your thermocouple. Also one very important thing, mostly when you change your thermocouple or you're using a new temperature controller make sure that the settings of your temperature controller are complying with your thermocouple because finally the temperature controller which you are using and a proper setting will help you gain good efficiency like the hysteresis temperature must be optimized to get a good temperature uh, to get a good fuel efficiency also, one of the main things is deposits on the thermocouple probe lead to false reading or may lead to readings with lag. So cleaning the thermocouple probe and the end uh, regularly will give you a good result. Let us move on to the next point, which is proper oven selection. Usually this is done in the beginning, but even if you have three or four machines and when you are deciding where you need to put this mold, your mold need to be put in appropriate oven size. A too small mold in a very big oven might not result into fuel efficiency. Also eliminate dead space in the oven by making it circular so that there is no extra corners or dead corners where unnecessary or not used air is being heated for no reason that would increase your fuel consumption. I think uh, one of the attendees has also raised the question that what uh, shape of oven is should be preferred for good efficiency. So I think cylindrical oven is good. If you can move on to spherical oven, it would give you even more efficiency. So I hope your question is answered.
then uh, inspection of gaskets periodically is a good thing so that there are uh, fewer leakages and hence fewer heat losses from your oven mounting the mole effectively so like you can see in this image this mole and this mole when it would be rotating in minor would come directly in front of the blower similarly when this mole would come down after the major rotation it would also get a good amount of time in front of the blower so if you mount your moles strategically that they would get good amount of time in front of the blower then you are heating your mold directly if you place it offset you need to heat more of the air and rest of your furnace before the mold would actually receive the heat so if mold is placed at a location which is receiving the hit of the air coming from the blower directly it would result you into a smaller cycle time and hence uh, lesser fuel consumption cool slowly is one of the very important things to cool slowly and it's very important that we do not shut down the blowers when the oven is already at high temperature usually during the last leg of the cycle or the last day of the shift people as soon as they finish the heating cycle they just want to shut off the blower and the burner both of them which is not a good thing the blowers must always be shut down after at least getting down of 70 to 60 degrees celsius because if you shut down blowers at high temperature it might bend the blower shaft and also affect your impellers also very high cooling rate can lead to fatigue on the inside surface of the furnace which the furnace might not be designed for and would reduce the life of your oven so cooling slowly is always a good idea one of the very important points is clean regularly uh cleaning the spilled powder inside the oven is very 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 important because all of us we know that lldp powder is by product of petroleum and is also petroleum in itself it is flammable and too much deposition of powder inside your burner can cause you safety issues in case of fire also one more thing is the spilled powder inside your oven is taking in the heat every time in your every cycle and you it cost you a little bit of uh, fuel in every cycle hence increasing your fuel consumption clean the mold outer surface like you can see in this mold it is a very tacky mold which is not clean for much time such dust deposition on the mold and powder deposition on the mold acts like an insulation layer and decreases the rate at which the mold is heated so which is not recommended for us so cleaning the mold regularly would result into a uh, mold being heated faster and less amount of energy being required to heat the mold thus saving us a little bit of fuel we need to keep the area of the oven clean of clean and away from the flammable objects like lldp powder itself and other plastic objects this is a very good example of a bad example of keeping your shop floor places because uh, the oven in spite of being using the powder this close to oven is a uh, safety wise a very big concern so cleaning regularly gives you very good results last but not the least you need to use the right powder so using a powder with lower melt flow index would result into powder melting faster and using lesser amount of fuel to um form the first layer second layer and the third layer for you thus reducing even your cycle time and also reducing the amount of fuel that you are consuming recycle powder everyone all of us knows uses more heat it increases your fuel consumption it increases your cycle time 
so it is really not recommended to use recycled powder in any form so to summarize what all we have gone through is we need to maintain our burner is the first step second thing is maintaining the blower smooth operation in, of the blower will lead to good air circulation and good air circulation will lead to uniform heating and efficient heating both so giving you a better quality and a good quality in the lower time i think a good oven location is very important how we have understood uh, clean fuel uh, for good burning of fuel the oven needs clean air supply and if you locate your oven properly you can ensure a good air supply and which would lead to proper con con combustion of your fuel air flow as the air flow finally would decide the uniformity and the heat transfer in this kind of furnaces so uh, using your air flow intelligently is very important the burner capacity need to be correct you need to consult your manufacturer to know the right burner capacity of your uh, for your oven i think thermocouples play it it's very important role and cleaning them regularly and maintaining them regularly is very important oven specifications that means oven sizes uh, not using small molds in large size of oven also using multiple molds at a time in the same oven would also result into a more efficient production and lesser fuel consumption per product so managing your size of the oven and size of the molds that you are using in the oven would lead to a very good way and uh, in a very good way uh, of uh, fuel fuel utilization cooling down slowly is again one of the very important things which we have seen cleaning regularly is always useful not only for the uh, molds and not only for your efficiency but also from your safety point of view for all of us we all are uh, related to petroleum products so much that we are very much used to um, the danger of catching fires which we really need to avoid so cleaning regularly is a very important step and using a good powder in today's market scenario in uh, especially in the indian market the market is very competitive the rates of powder and the rates of fuel are ever increasing none of these is in our hand what is uh, and it is all in the market and it is same for all of us and our competitors what is in our hand is uh, having a good technology having a good machine and after having a good machine what is in our hand is maintaining it properly and getting the highest efficiency out of it and using it properly so that you need to, uh, the least amount of powder or least amount of fuel out of it so totally when you will uh, you cannot control the prices of powder and fuel but what you can control and what is in your hand is using them using them in an optimum way and optimizing your shop floor practices around it so that you can use it in the best way so um i would like to leave you with one thing is always maintain a record maintaining once or maintaining twice or maintaining regularly is not enough but keeping a record of what you have maintained so uh, like example in gas burner we needed we we needed to check the pressure of the first stage regulator the pressure of the second stage regulator so you need to keep a record of all of this that okay i had checked one month before the pressure was this okay the second week the pressure is this the second third week the pressure is this if you consistently have a record and you have a data then you have something to compare to if you keep comparing and you realize oh it used to be constant but now it is going down so if you have previous data then the new data can give you indication if there is a leakage or then the new data can tell you if there is a reason uh, why this might be happening 
but uh, if you do not have the data then you are just another person with an opinion so even after maintaining everything if you are not keeping a record of it you are still assuming something and just doing a trial and error whereas you if whereas with a record you can have a sure shot way of knowing what is right or what is wrong on your shop floor activities so i think that's all that i have to say i would open this discussion for any questions from any of your side I think Mr. Rafi has a question. Hello. Good evening, Divya. Yeah. Good evening, Rafi. Good evening, Divya. Good evening, Rafi. How are you, Opna? A wonderful presentation. Yeah, I really appreciate. I, I am I audible? Yes, yes, you are, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Sir. Yeah, so it was a very good presentation. A, a big kudos for that, and it was indeed was an eye opener. As you said, uh, you now what is your suggestion of using a diesel fuel and versa versus with a PG fuel or any other fuel that could bring down our cost of operation in the uh, fuel side? Do you have you done any calculations of working on this particular uh, part of it? Yes, so uh, I think uh, that uh, gas burner and I think CNG is one of the cheapest and the cleanest forms of uh, uh, fuel, which is very efficient. But uh, what actually keeping in mind the market area and everything you need to consider is the amount of fuel that you are using, and also economics do come into picture. so if you are needing only uh, let us say you need either 5 uh, 5 liter of diesel or you need 3.8 kg of gas so yes gas is always uh, in this case gas is more efficient than diesel but if in your local area the diesel is not available at uh, diesel is easily available and gas availability is not good you might even have to prefer uh, taking diesel over gas but then it's a question of uh, uh, efficiency versus the cost so gas is always a more efficient fuel but then uh, i think in indian market the wooden pallets are available actually at a very low cost so for you cost wise wooden pallets are more uh, yeah allow me to allow me to ask one more question yes please uh, is uh, uh, Can this be? Uh, uh, is there any thumb rule of calculation of so many liters or so many kilos of gas for every kilo of polyethylene? Is there any thumb rule in which we can benchmark anything above that is good, okay. or anything below this is poor? Ah, uh, you cannot actually uh, thumb rule according to the weight of powder with the amount of. Uh, a uh, fuel that you will be consuming because there are many much more factors than just the weight of the powder uh, like uh, uh, the volume of your furnace is going to affect the kind of burner that you have selected is going to affect your fuel consumption also uh, how heavy your mounting is is going to affect your consumption because if unnecessary the mounting is heavy the mounting is also going to eat up the uh, energy uh, which you are using to raise the temperature so there are many different factors so there uh, isn't any thumb rule also it would depend on actually how much uh, weight you are putting together so suppose in the same oven the first cycle you are making only two tanks of 1000 liter so let us say 50 kg of material but in the same you are then you make 752 tanks so your material is less but your fuel consumption is the same so it also depends on how you are utilizing your oven so by far i don't okay, think we you. can make any thumb rule thank you thank you rafi yeah you copy i just uh... no i think there are a few more questions 
I Hello. 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 Can I? I'm audible. Yes, you are. Hello, Rafi. Yeah, tell me. Tell me, Omakar. Yeah, yeah. Just when comparing with the diesel, actually, gas is always better for cleanliness and all that. But only uh, keep in mind when you are using the gas, you have to be use the big uh, bank of cylinders or you have some pressure uh, or tank or something to utilize the total gas. Many times what happens, you are not utilizing the total gas in the cylinder because of the once it's going down, it will not able to keep the pressure. So then you will use, uh, then you will lose on the balance gas in the cylinder so that's why you have to be careful using a big bank of uh, tanks like uh, 10 tanks or something like that or you use some uh, storage thing to give the uh, get the maximum utilization of the gas you got thank you thank you yeah, yeah. i think uh, mr jagdish has posted a very good question uh, I'm unable to mute him, but I would read out his question to everyone. His question is, which side, that is top or bottom of oven, blower fan mounting is suitable for the oven? So, Jagdish, the answer would be the blower fan of the uh, oven must always be placed in the bottom. The air must be thrown from the bottom side and it must be sucked from the top side because... Uh, when you throw in the hot air from down, it has a tendency of going up and it will be very easy and naturally the air circulation will flow in a good way. So um, mounting your blower fan on the bottom of the oven is better than mounting it on the top of your oven. Otherwise, you will need to use a very high capacity blower to actually push in the complete air. I think oh, I think Sanjay sir I'm trying to unmute you but I'm unable to do Mute that you. Um, I think Jitendra, if you're online, I'm unable to mute a few, uh, unmute a few attendees who do have a question raised. So can you please help me out in unmuting them? Hello. 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 Hi, Vivia. You want to unmute Mr. Sanjay, I think. Yeah, I think Mr. Nikunj is already unmuted, so we might attend his question first. Yes, Mr. Nikunj, can I help you? Okay, I think we need to unmute Mr. Prashant Trivedi, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Prashant. Uh, Vivia, uh, good evening. Uh, Prashant Trivedi here. Yes, uh, 
the talk was very good, but uh, one question which comes into my mind is that basically, uh, no, uh, the thing is that basically when uh, we are uh, going for multiple products, yes, uh, on the same arm, then uh, how uh, efficiently we can. Uh, um, monitor the uh, air flow into the oven or basically controlling the heat. Uh, how we should? Uh... Yes. So when you are mounting multiple molds on the same arm, one suggestion, uh, the first suggestion that comes to my mind would be that uh, uh, balancing of the molds first need to be done within the selection of mold itself. Um, the, by that I mean that you need not put mm. some extra uh, blocks only for balancing sake on the uh, on your spider because the extra blocks that you will put are going to suck in the energy and when you are mounting multiple molds at the same time you mm. might have a few molds which need higher amount of energy as mm. compared to a few molds with the other one because there's no perfect way of or there's no perfect, yeah. usually not a perfect combination. So I would suggest that the uh, molds which need mm. fewer, a little less amount of energy should be set a little offset so that they do mm. not come directly in front of the blower mm. or they have lesser amount of time in front of the blower and your uh, molds that need more energy mm. should be placed in such a way that they get the maximum time exactly in front of the blower. So that would be one of the helpful ways in and uh, yeah that's good. the products at the same yeah. time thank you thank you Deepak. also the second question what is coming in my mind for the double wall yeah yes please please yeah sorry so one thing i wanted to add in uh, the previous for the double question. wall hello you can continue Yes. So uh, one thing I wanted to add in your yeah, previous you can question. Continue. Yes. One thing I wanted to add in the previous answer is there are a few features in the uh, different kind of machine that uh, you can stop your machine in between. Uh, you can stop your uh, uh, arm at a specific angle so that your specific components come in front of the blower for a larger amount of time. So. If you have uh, specifically multiple mounted products in which one has a specific extremely higher uh, uh, heat requirement than the others, you can use mechanisms like stop and roll in such cases to uh, aid your uh, requirement. Yeah. I think uh, now you can ask me the double question. And second question is that. Yeah. Uh, for the double wall uh, products, basically where there is a depth is there. Uh, we had been uh, also advised by many machine owners that you require to have a special uh, uh, oven uh, where basically you have to uh, create a draft of air which reaches to the inside part of the product. Uh, how truthness is there in this statement? Uh, yes, it is a very true statement because um, the usual maximum and the usual furnaces which are there in roto molding are usually designed for products like water tank which do not really need a, a you know double walled or in depth they do not need to go the air circulation so the air circulation is designed for single wall product but when you design a furnace in which you want to make double wall product you need to make sure that at some point in your oven, the air circulation is controlled in such a way that there's a gush of air which is created and which would enter the um, your double wall product. So I think I would try to make a small drawing in one of the part of this uh, presentation itself. So maybe it can uh, it would become more understandable what I'm saying is for example uh, mm. normally uh, in the normal ovens the blower is facing like this so your 
your air supply is usually only like in this direction so when you place a mold which mm. has a double wall thickness the maximum air is touching only on the outside part of the mm. mold and thus your inside is a very small thickness mm. but the same if you want to do it for a mm. double wall mold one of the changes which uh, we do it in our machine so i know that there might be different ways as well but what we do is the air flow is also done from the bottom half so the air which is not mm. only coming from here but the air rushes in from here as well and actually both these airs fuse and uh, basically from here and here they come and fuse like this and a gush of air is created in this direction mm. basically here but then the mold would be here so uh, you need to direct the air flow in okay. such a way that the inside part of the mold also must receive the air so if you want to make double walled product yes you need a different kind of air circulation than the usual one it would give a better result and then okay. you would you can eliminate preheating in you. such cases i hope i answered yeah, your question well maximum sir. heat maximum heat to apply because of the pressure of the air hot air yes. yeah mm. so you have to be, that air has to be spread with the all the uh, thickness of the mold then it will go uh, then it will transfer efficiently so for inner inner side or uh, when the depth is more so air has to be reached inside that particular depth portion so there is the same thing so you can use that uh, wood blower thing or you can use some external things to reach there good good thank you very much thank you this was for benefit of my team as well yes i think uh, one more way in which this can be achieved is uh, along with the along with the arms there is a air supply extra air supply pipe given which you can connect with pipes in your mold if you put and pneumatically you can force in extra air for giving the same effect in selected areas of your mold very good I think yeah that is also a good good suggestion good input good input uh does anyone else have any questions which need to be answered okay i think uh, pradeep sir has a question so uh, i think i cannot seem to find him but i will read out his question what should be the nozzle sizes for diesel fired oven what should be the nozzle sizes for diesel fired oven so uh basically sir uh, there are different kinds of uh, diesel burners so uh, every burner comes with a manual and the manual does supply that for what amount of uh, wattage do you want to achieve what kind of nozzle you should be using so i think uh, referring ma referring the manual will give you the exact correct answer then uh, uh, i because i do not know what burner you are using uh, i would not be able to answer that question directly but if you refer the manual the manual does give the size of oven for your requirement i think uh, santi kumar sir i have unmuted you if you have any question Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Actually, you know, is it better to feed the powder inside the oven or outside the oven? Feeding up the powder. So, for the first cycle of the day, it is better to give a preheating and then feed in your powder. Okay. uh but from the second cycle onwards okay. your mold has already reached a certain uh, temperature once so even if you put the first layer from uh, uh, okay. before putting in the oven itself it would not uh, be a big issue for you but the first cycle it is always recommended to put uh, 
uh, to preheat your uh, oven and the molds first so that the mold once it has achieved the heating evenly it would give a better result and uh, uniform more uniformity mm -hmm. okay the so one more question huh? yes sir. actually you know the mold supposed to have a direct heating or indirect heating uh, which one is the better for the mold so for mold the flame has to directly heat on the mold or it has to it has to come indirectly no uh, the flame when directly if you if you are directly heating the uh, mold with a flame then it is not a good way because in that case you are unable to regulate the actual temperature of the mold it might it is a judgmental thing it might cause your uh, powder mm -hmm. to overheat or maybe underheat sometimes so uh, when you do it with uh, indirectly air uh -huh. because you are controlling uh -huh. the temperature of air and air temperature and speed is under your control thus the mold temperature and the powder temperature is under your control so okay. it would give you a better result but if you are directly heating the tool using uh, thermostats okay. or you are using electrical mechanisms like uh, the smart from italy uh, the i smart machines from italy then yes that would be the more efficient way of doing it but then only direct heating is only efficient it is if it is in a controlled way okay okay mm -hmm. I hope I have answered okay. your question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I think. And you. I think. Uh, Sanjay, sir, and Nikun, sir, I am unable to unmute you because you have muted yourself. Yes, Mr. Nikun. Yes, sir. hello yes sir i can hear you yeah, yeah ma'am thank you for your presentation thank you sir uh, yeah yeah i just uh, need your suggestion uh, how we can uh, reduce our cycle time uh, for uh, roto molded products uh, with multiple products in our uh, you are using multiple products in the same arm and you want to reduce your uh, uh, cycle time yeah ma'am yes so uh, one thing which we have covered is i think one of the basic things is if you refer to your uh, powder supplier having a powder with a low melt flow index and a good uh, viscosity would give you a faster cycle the second thing when you follow all these steps which we have discussed today that your uh, burner is functioning properly your uh, air circulation is proper so with all these things i think that would be the minimum time which you will get yes because uh, i would not suggest you to increase your temperature just to reduce the time because it has its own different effects and which are really not uh, desirable so i think if you follow a proper procedure you will get a minimum uh, the cycle time but uh, further going down on the cycle time would uh, affect you with the quality factors i think if omar yeah, khan yeah, sir do you, you have any suggestion on this suppose uh, the we have to use a low mfi material so if melting flow index uh, index is uh, affect in our product quality or it is not affect our product quality if we are using uh, less uh, mfi uh, lldp powder then it will be affect to our product quality or it will not affect uh, i think uh, umakan sir will be the right person to answer yeah, this can, question can, yeah yeah uh dev i just missed his question uh, totally uh, he is asking about the different mfi right yes so he is yes, asking sir. if a uh, uh, can a you just order with lower melt flow index will it affect the uh, quality of the product 
yeah definitely uh, high mfi and low mfi is different uh, for a, uh, different properties for mechanic mechanical properties if you want stronger product the less mfi is better and if you want some aesthetic products and uh, with the strength you can compromise then you can go for high high mfi so you have to choose in between high and low depending on your final product requirements yeah hello i think he has muted himself so uh, we seem to have answered his question okay yeah okay okay yeah think, you can move it yes. tarkish yeah. sir i i think we can attend your question yes hi good evening divya and uh, umakanji yeah. good evening uh, I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, in high MFI and low MFI, what is the uh, part thickness difference? Hello. Oma Khan, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. I heard your question. I think uh, Umakan sir is answering. Uh, repeat, repeat, just the back. There is a communication. Communication is a problem. Yeah, can you repeat the way? What is the question? Uh, exactly? His question is: uh, uh, In using high melt I flow index question. powder and low melt flow index powder, what is the yeah. uniformity thickness difference that we get? Uniformity in thickness. So yes. that that yeah that will depend on your mold ratio. Your uniformity in thickness, we, uh, the MFI will not affect the uniformity of the uh, you can say product. It can affect the centering and the finish of the product, but not the you can say uh, it it is not going to affect the uniformity of the wall. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think Sanjay sir has a question since long time. Sanjay sir, if you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, you can. Ah uh, yes, Mohammed sir, you you seem to have a question, sir. Yes, Mohammed sir, if you want to ask the question. I think Akshay has also raised a question. He, your question, Akshay's question is, what is performance difference between furnace cross-section being square or round? So I think I would explain to you this with a simple figure. Square oven. In your square oven, your arm is only moving in this area. So, 
all this cross sectional area where the arm doesn't reach and the mold doesn't reach is a area which is heated but not utilized so the difference between uh, the the volume of this part the green shaded part is unutilized area in a square cross sectional oven so that is how it is going to affect your uh, uh, furnace utilization yes i think mohammed sir you can ask your question yep. Sir, if you have any question. Uh, I think, think yes. Uh, yes, I think Rajiv sir has a question. Rajiv Sharma sir, I can answer your question. Yeah, hi, how are you? Hi, I am. Yeah. Well, uh, my question is that uh, nowadays uh, wood pallets are becoming uh, uh, very popular in the market. Yes. So my concern is that. Uh, uh is it uh, like you know efficiently working in the oven and how much like you know there is a cost saving yes. and uh, the most important is that how much it is safe to use this kind of a technology yes. so uh, i think uh, a few uh, points i'll use to say about uh, the wood fire pallets uh i'm really not sure of the exact value of what is the calorific value of these wooden uh, pallets but as far as i know engineering point of view if you think it is not as efficient as gas but in the terms of economics it is really much mm -hmm. more uh, economical than using gas because even if you have to burn more amount of wooden pallets it is going mm -hmm. to still cost you less than how much the gas will cost you so yes with uh, a feedback from uh, most of our customers we have a feedback that there is around at least 30% of saving in the cost while using wooden fire uh, pallets the second thing how how safe it is to use in the uh, in place of the gas and diesel burners so yes safety standards of gas and diesel burners are way 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 higher than the uh, wooden burners wooden pallet burners which i have seen in india but then there is always scope of you know doing something to make it more safe so it is not very not safe to use but then uh, uh one thing which affects actually affects the utilization of this kind of burner is that in india the popularity is uh the furnace is designed for a gas burner or a diesel burner and that is removed and you are using a wooden pallet burner but i think uh, if it is priorly mentioned and then there is some research done in roto molding which i think we should be doing and we are, are also doing so a few changes actually made in the design of the furnace can actually help to increase the efficiency of wooden uh, fiber pallets even much more than what you are achieving it today sir So what exactly like if you have to recommend to a, a manufacturer who is yes. buying a machine so what do you recommend like is it good to have a wood pallets or gas or diesel See, like number 1 number 2 number 3 yeah in my opinion number 1 is gas number 2 well, is diesel and the third one is yeah. wooden pallet but then i would always say my opinion is 
ha- will have an engineering bias which would not always match with economics so finally when you are taking a decision you have to take an economical decision and you have to consider the market prices in your area raju yes. raju in my oh, dekha sir please yeah, yeah raju ji in my perspective when you want to take the decision in the comparison right mm-hmm. now situation of the uh, that pallet burner is that mm-hmm. there is a where room to development of this all these types of burner right the people right. are just using uh, uh, developing some other applications like uh, boiler or furnaces and they are using same thing here the rightly right. said they were that the oven and everything should be uh, designed as per the requ- uh, burner and everything in combined with the, all the things okay and one right. what i have heard till date that the uh, for heating rate it is on the slower side because of the calorific values and all that and second right. thing uh, i have seen there is a lot of sparks coming out of the burner and all that that is very uh, risky because right. we are working with the all polymer and mm-hmm. all the your workers are moving around and if suddenly the uh, burner is giving uh, uh, sparks sparks around so it's dangerous so technology is not a problem but technology mm-hmm. has to be developed and it it has to be safely uh, safely done then it will then we can compare with all these things right now this is in the initial stages and i think people can take up to the next level yeah great great thank you thank you thank you sir yeah i think uh, i will take, is, uh, yes i think i will take this opportunity to thank all of you for making this session a very interactive one and thank you for your overwhelming response if i have any uh, unanswered questions left you do have my email id you can mail me at divyaraitata@vinodrai.com or maybe you can contact jitendra and he'll get hold of me uh, to answer your questions but i think it's time that we need to close the webinar today so thank you again everyone for being here today thank you and give you feedbacks and uh, suggestions for the new uh, the topics to be covered in this series of webinar yeah thanks all bye yeah thank you very much and we'll uh, this is jitendra rana from star and we'll soon be sharing with all the attendees and other members of star the recording of this webinar thank you very much everyone